guys, what's going on? Chris Cook in Nashville here, and today I'm gonna do a recipe for you guys. I'm really excited about this one. I kinda accidentally stumbled on this technique, and I really have been looking forward to sharing it with you. I know a bunch of you have been asking for it, and today we're gonna do carnivore brioche buns. I did them hot dog shape today, but you can do them as hot dog, hamburger, any other kind of shape you can think of, sub rolls, everything is going to become much, much more available to you when it comes to using buns like this because these are fantastic, completely carnivore, and I'm really excited to show you guys how this is done because I haven't seen this before. So let's go have some fun in the kitchen, show you how to make the carnivore hot dog buns. All right, folks, here's our ingredients for the recipe today. I've got them all laid out for you here. Um, so a couple of these things are going to be optional. Uh, the baking soda and the vinegar in the recipe are optional. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But there's a couple of different ways you can do this, and this is the one that I'm choosing. So I have five total egg yolks, and then I'm going to add three additional whole eggs to this bowl. Okay, I have four tablespoons of butter. I have two ounces of cream cheese. I have about a half a teaspoon of salt, and then I'm going to add one tablespoon of beef gelatin powder and two tablespoons of the egg white protein powder, and that's when I'm going to use uh, the vinegar as well. If you decide to do the optional vinegar and baking soda combination, this white vinegar that I'm grabbing is going to go in to the first mix. There are two different mixes we're making. This is the first one with the egg yolks. Okay, on the other side, I'm going to have a second mix, which is five egg whites that I had separated, two tablespoons of egg white powder, one tablespoon of beef gelatin, and that is when I will add the baking soda in with the egg white mixture so that it will interact with the vinegar in the egg yolk mixture. So there's two different things. We're gonna do the egg yolk side with the fat first, we're gonna do the white side second, and then we're going to combine the two to actually make our batter for the buns. Okay, so that's all of the ingredients we're gonna need. Let's go ahead and get started on cooking. Okay, I'm over at the stove. I've got a nonstick skillet on a medium to low heat, and I also have my blender nearby, at least the blender portion, the, the cup portion, because I'm going to be putting this mixture into the blender and we're going to be making essentially a scrambled egg paste. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is put my butter into the skillet, get that starting to melt. Now I have this on a medium to low heat. You do not want this too high because we're going to scramble these extra egg yolks and those three whole eggs, but make sure to turn that heat down because we do not want to put any brown color on the eggs. That flavor is not going to be quite what we're looking for, so we want to scramble these eggs, but not actually brown them. So this is three whole eggs, five egg yolks. Now, if you have a bunch of egg yolks to use up, you can replace those three whole eggs with six more egg yolks. You can actually squeeze as much fat into these as you want by using extra egg yolks. I just didn't have any extra egg yolks on hand, so I did three whole eggs as well from the separation of the, the five eggs with the whites and the yolks, that's where those other five came from. Then I add my salt, and we're just gonna scramble this. Now, this is on a medium-low heat, and we're gonna keep this moving because I don't want it to start to brown. I wanna get it cooked all the way through, but not actually brown it. And if you turn it up too high, it will brown before it actually cooks all the way through. So we wanna get this cooked all the way through, we're actually gonna kind of scramble this and dry these eggs out a little bit. We do not wanna brown them, but we do want them cooked all the way through and scrambled well enough that most of that extra liquid has come out of them. And when we get to the end here, you'll kind of see how that looks. Okay, so my eggs are basically scrambled. Now what I'm doing is I'm pushing them flat. I've still got the pan turned on to a low, kind of low medium heat, but I'm gonna kind of turn them over and smash them down against the pan with the spatula. I'm just trying to squeeze them flat and keep smashing them down to where they start to dry out a little bit, but without browning. I want them to get kind of dry, not exactly crumbly, but definitely not wet. You want them well scrambled all the way through. And with that extra fat in there, this is not really a problem. They'll get kind of smushy and kind of 
glossy looking and then they start to get kind of dry and that's the texture of eggs that we want. Okay, you can see they're really crumbly and kind of broken up. They sort of toss in the pan pretty nicely because they've dried out quite a bit. They're not sticking together. Now it's time to put these into my blender carafe here. Just scrape those all in, and then we're going to add more ingredients. Okay, there's the eggs in the blender. You can kind of see the crumbly texture they have. Now, on top of that, I'm going to add my two ounces of cream cheese. And I'm going to go ahead and put in the white vinegar. Now, if you're not doing this step of the white vinegar, you don't have to use it. But I do recommend it because it makes this work out really, really well. You don't have to do this. But if you're okay with the vinegar, it doesn't bother me. I use two to three tablespoons. Two tablespoons is enough. If you want a little more of a tang flavor with your bread, you can add three. That was about one. That's about two. It's not real vital. You just have to get close. So I'm just going to add the vinegar straight in there. Okay, so now I've got my blender all set up. I'm going to put the lid on. This is the scrambled eggs, the cream cheese, and the vinegar. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on low. I've got this just set on one. I'm going to turn this on low, and I want to slowly start to combine these ingredients and then slowly increase the speed. If you do this too quickly, you'll end up with a bubble at the bottom with air that you can't get out, and then you have to add liquid to get it to blend because it just wants to stick. It won't sink down as it's blending, and it becomes a major problem. So turn this on low, let it sit and really chop up, and then we're slowly going to increase speed. If you have a blender that only has a couple of speeds, really try to blend it on low for a while before you start to put it on high, okay? So I'm just slowly starting to turn it up, and you can see it's starting to liquefy, it's starting to go down. I'm not having any issue of a big air bubble at the bottom. I'm gonna turn this into what is essentially an egg paste. Okay, I'm slowly turning this all the way up to high, and I'm gonna let that sit and really, really blend this into a paste well. And if you do get a little bit of an air bubble, just turn it down, turn it off, shake it a little bit, that air bubble will pop while it's still running on low. And then you can let that sit and emulsify a little bit more, and then you can go further. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off, and now we're going to do the next step. So I've got my beef gelatin, and I've also got my egg white powder. We're actually going to add this in while the blender is running, so that way we don't get any lumps, and we get a nice even distribution of these powders in what is already a paste. So here's how we do this. We're going to turn the blender on very low. Just make sure it's running. I'm taking the little cap off. If you don't have a cap, if you just have a lid, take the lid off. One tablespoon of beef gelatin is going to go in while that blender is running, and that's going to help it combine. And there you can see it pours in. That combines it into the paste really well. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing. While that's still running, I'm just getting my egg white protein, and I'm going to take the egg white powder, and I'm going to put in two tablespoons of the egg white powder, the exact same while the blender is running. And I put it in kind of slowly. I kind of sprinkle it in. Don't just dump the whole chunk in there. Just put it in a little bit slowly, and that way it will combine really well with this paste. And then once both of those are in there and they're well combined into the paste, we'll go ahead and turn it back up on high, and we'll let that blend in there really well just remember, turn that up a little bit slowly so you don't get that air bubble. Just ease it on up, or like I said, if you have a blender that only has a couple of settings, really let it combine well on low before you start to turn it up to high. Okay, and that's it. So I let that blend for probably 20 seconds to combine really well. That is our egg paste mixture, and this is going to be the foundation of how we do this. You can see it's thick, it's still steaming, it's nice and hot, and you can see it is a thick, pasty mixture. That's the texture that you want because that protein structure is what's going to make these buns hold up with all of that fat. Okay, guys, so now our next step is to get a large bowl. You need one that has plenty of room. We're going to scrape our egg yolk mixture out, put it in this bowl. It's a little tough, but uh, you know, it's worth it to get this out of the blender here. So we're going to have this egg yolk mixture cooling in this bowl, and we need a large bowl because we need room to be able to fold into it, okay? So make sure you have plenty of room in this bowl. You can see how thick of a texture this sort of egg yolk paste is, 
and this is really going to be helpful when we go to make those fluffy fatty buns. And once you have all of your egg mixture that we have scrambled in a large bowl, I just spread it out like this. Now, you don't necessarily have to do this, but I find that this works better if you let this cool a little bit while we're working on the egg white mixture. Okay, so I'm just going to spread it around that large bowl and let it sit and cool while I make the egg white mixture. Okay, now we're going to go over to the mixer. I have my five egg whites that I'm going to add to my mixer bowl. Make sure your mixer bowl is nice and clean. There's no fat because we want this to whip up. Now, if you're not doing the baking soda and vinegar, you are going to make sure to get these two really, really stiff peaks, and then I'll show you how to be a little more gentle. But we're going to put the five egg yolks in there. We're going to put in two tablespoons of egg white powder, and then we're going to add one tablespoon of beef gelatin. I just add these in here. That was two tablespoons, but one of them was kind of a half spoon, so that's why I did two. It's also not vital that this is an exact, exact measurement. It's really more about the effect the egg white powder has. Okay, so I've got my egg white powder in there. I'm going to add my beef gelatin powder, one tablespoon of that. And again, it's not exactly vital that it has to be a perfect amount. It's more just getting it in the general range. And then what we're going to do is just turn this on low and start to combine it just like that. And then as that's starting to combine just a little bit, we'll start turning up the speed and we're going to whip this into an egg white mixture, which you've seen lots of other keto and carnivore breads probably that are done this way. So nothing particularly new here, but this is the first step to getting that fluffiness. Now, again, if you're not doing the vinegar and baking soda part of this, you're really going to want to make sure that this egg white mixture is very, very stiff because that will be where your air in your bread is going to come from. So I've turned this up on high. I'm just going to let this sit and work its way through until it works out all of those lumps and it starts turning into a marshmallowy looking consistency. Now, while this is starting to whip up, make sure you get a second spatula. Do not use the one that has the egg yolks. Use a clean spatula because if you get any fat in here, this is not going to whip up properly. Okay, this is starting to get foamy. I'm just going to take a clean spatula. I'm going to scrape down the sides. Just make sure that there's no gel or lumps or anything stuck to the sides. And then we're going to turn it back on high. Okay, you can see we're at kind of a soft marshmallowy consistency. I'm going to go ahead and turn this down. This only took a few minutes to get to this point. While it is still soft, before it is fully firm peaks, if you are adding baking soda, this is the time when you do it. You can go anywhere from a quarter teaspoon to a half teaspoon. I find about a half teaspoon works best. And you're going to combine that in on top of the egg whites. You can see it's kind of marshmallowy. It's holding a peak, but those peaks are kind of soft and droopy. That's the texture that you want so that you can add in the baking soda. Okay. Now, I don't really measure baking soda when I'm putting it in here. I don't find it necessary. I know about what a half teaspoon looks like. So between a quarter teaspoon and a half teaspoon, I put in there. And then I'm going to turn my mixer back on and we'll start to whip it. And we're going to get this mixed back in. Make sure you always lift the bowl back up. Sometimes I get a little excited. Lift the bowl up, turn this back on high. And we're just going to continue combining this until we get those stiff peaks. Okay, and after another minute or two, you should have what looks essentially like marshmallow cream. It should be nice and firm. I'm going to scrape down the sides one last time just to make sure that there's no lumps, bumps, or anything else stuck on there, and then we should be good to go. And you can see this kind of firm marshmallow consistency. That's what you're looking for. All right, one final whip to make sure everything is well combined, and that is going to be our egg white mixture. We can go ahead and take this bowl off the mixer, and we can get to making our brioche. Okay, guys, this is the magic where this recipe actually starts to work. We're going to be putting this egg white mixture into this egg yolk mixture, and we're going to be folding it. Now, because we have baking soda in the egg white mixture and vinegar in the egg yolk mixture, if you decided to use both of those things, you're going to get a little bit of extra foaminess as this starts to bake. But even if you don't, this is the step where you're going to get the fluffiness in your bread. You're just going to be want a little, be a little more gentle 
with folding this in if you decided not to use the baking soda. So what I'm going to do is take one third of my egg white mixture. Okay, just one third. I'm going to use the egg white spatula to put that over here into the bowl with the egg yolks. And I'm going to fairly aggressively combine these. I'm folding, I'm scraping under and folding it over, but then I'm mixing it together. This is a lot more of an aggressive folding technique than I'm going to do for the rest of the egg white mixture, but this is essentially what you do when you make souffles. You're going to fold your egg whites in, you use the first third so that you get a nice mixture, and then you use the second two thirds to actually create the fluffy texture. So I'm going to pretty aggressively fold this first third in to the egg yolk mixture, which has been sitting here cooling, which this is one of the reasons that's important. It just makes this work much, much better to not have those egg yolks be too hot. We're going to get this all scraped down and you essentially want to mix this until there is no white streaks left. You want to basically have a pale yellow consistent color and a fluffy texture through your entire mix, just like that. Once you are finished with that, you can then add all of the additional egg white mixture on top, and then we're gonna fold more gently. Now, this is the place where if you didn't use the vinegar and the baking soda, you really want to be gentle with this because if you knock all the air out of it, your bread is gonna end up dense and it's not gonna taste very good. I really recommend using the vinegar and the baking soda if you can. Vinegar has no carbs, obviously. It doesn't seem to bother many carnivores at all. If you're really worried about it, I understand. It doesn't bother me at all. And baking soda is just a mineral. It's basically like salt, um, just a, a different kind. So I don't find either one of those to be a problem. But if you do, I understand. Uh, just consider that this next step, you're going to have to be really, really gentle to try to keep as much air in this as possible. And once we have those additional two thirds of the egg whites in, we're gonna do the exact same thing, except now you're gonna see I'm gonna cut through the middle, come underneath and gently on top, cut through the middle, go underneath, gently on top. And I'm rotating the bowl as I'm doing this because I wanna combine these two to where I essentially don't see any white. If you see little tiny bits of white a little bit, that's fine, but you wanna keep doing this and keep turning this over and be as gentle as you can and try to keep as much of that air in there as possible. This is gonna make a fluffy batter for your bread and it's going to give you that light, puffy, enjoyable texture with your carnivore brioche. Okay, here is essentially what this is going to look like when you've finished. You can see it's all included. There's no white bits. It looks kind of bumpy, lumpy, crumbly, but it's also fluffy at the same time. And it's very light and has a nice paste texture. That's perfect. We're ready to bake some brioche. So here I just have a parchment paper over a cookie sheet. This is going to be put on here. Now you can do this with a spoon and try to just create shapes but I find there's actually a much easier technique, and that is using a Ziploc bag. You can also use a piping bag if you have one of those, but uh, very few carnivores do. So if we put this into a Ziploc bag and clip off the corner, we get a poor man's piping bag, and it's going to make this a lot easier to create these bun shapes. So all you need to do is put your egg mixture into this Ziploc bag, and then I'll show you how to make a piping bag technique out of it. Once you've got your Ziploc bag full of your mixture, do not squish it down. I'm pushing the extra air out of the sides, but do not squish this mixture because we've worked really hard to keep air in this mixture and we wanna make sure that stays there. So you're just going to take out the air. We're gonna clip off that corner. We fold over the top edge this way and we're gonna use that corner that we cut off as a piping bag. So get yourself a pair of scissors and reach down here. Now how big of a cut you make is going to determine how big of an opening you have. So I did about an inch long of a cut there on that corner so that I have a decent size opening because I'm making buns. If you want it a little smaller, it's easier to control. If you want it a little bit bigger because you're doing burger buns, that's fine too. You'll just have to play with this and see how you like to do this. But then once you have that done, you can set up your cookie sheet and watch how easy this becomes. So make sure your parchment paper is centered you can reach over the top of your cookie sheet really well. You're going to sort of gather up all of the excess bag 
behind the mixture and you gently squeeze with that top hand I'm guiding with my right hand and I'm just piping out hot dog buns. Now, if you want to do hamburger buns, you do these circular. But if you want to do hot dog buns, you do them in an oblong shape. And this makes doing this so much easier because if you try to do this with a spoon, it just takes a lot of effort and it's tough to keep it all in the right shape. Now, if you're doing burger buns, try to stack this as high as you can because you want that kind of tall, puffy looking bun by the end. So try to stack it up as best you can on top of itself because this is going to rise in the oven, but it is not going to rise as much as, say, a normal flour-based bread with yeast or something would. This is going to stay a little bit flatter, so just try to stack them as thick as you can. And when you get down to the end here, you know, try to add a little bit extra to the ones that maybe don't have quite as much of the batter. Just try to make them as even-sized as you can. And this is what's so easy about this. You just squeeze the last of the batter down, squeeze it all out, form your buns, and then you throw the Ziploc bag away. Now these don't look super pretty and shapely exactly, but what I'm going to do is take the spatula from uh, one of the bowls, it could be the egg white or the egg yolk, doesn't matter, and I'm just going to kind of square up the edges a little bit. You don't have to do this, I just like to do it because at one point in my life I owned a bakery and, and I was very picky about my bread, so I just like to make it look normally uh, consistent, um, as, as nice and pretty as I can. Just makes me feel good about it. So anyway, I'm just kind of smoothing the tops, smoothing off the edges. You don't have to do this, but if you want them to look consistent, you can totally do this. Okay. Now this is a totally optional step, but I do recommend it because it's nice. I have one egg and a large pinch of salt in a bowl. I'm going to just use a fork. I'm going to whisk this up, and this is essentially making an egg wash. Now, if you haven't baked bread or any kind of baked goods before that use an egg wash, essentially what this is is we're going to put this over the top of these buns, and it's going to, number one, keep them from crusting as fast because the moisture will make them softer so they rise better. Two, it's going to make them nice and golden brown. So I have a pastry brush. I'm going to dip it into the egg wash, and really, really gently we're going to pat this on to the top. Okay. Again, you don't have to do this, but it is going to make these look and taste more like a normal hot dog bun or burger bun or any other kind of bun that you would make because this is essentially what they do when they make those kinds of things on an industrial level. Okay. So we're just going to add a little bit of egg wash all over. It tastes nice. It's glossy. It gives it a nice brown color and it's just the best way in my opinion to top your dough, or batter in this case, before you put it into the oven and bake it. Okay, and I'm just finishing up the last one here. Also, if you're not fully carnivore, maybe you're ketivore or you're keto, this is a great way to then put things like sesame seeds or poppy seeds on top of your buns because that egg wash will hold it. You can sprinkle it on top. And now, these are ready for the oven. All right, guys, these go in the oven at 450 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. Here at 10 minutes, you can see they're rounding on the end. They're starting to puff up. That egg wash is allowing the top to stay soft so they can rise bigger. And after about 10 minutes, see, they're looking fantastic. So these are almost done. We just got to get them golden brown. And there is what they look like when they're finished, a nice golden brown color. And I'm going to go ahead and cut one open for you here and show you what these actually look like. So these have been cooling for about 10 minutes. I've got a sharp serrated blade and I'm just going to slice them from the side. Don't push, just use a sawing motion back and forth because these are a little more delicate, uh, but they are absolutely fantastic. And you can see they slice, they are soft and flexible, so you can open them and you can see they are puffy and they're squishy and they have that yellow brioche kind of thing going on. These are high fat, they're extremely tasty, and you can see that egg wash, how it makes it glossy and golden brown on top. Guys, you put a hot dog on this, and most people probably would have no idea that it's not just a hot dog bun. Okay guys, there it is. That's how we do these brioche buns. I'm working on the ability to make sure the recipe is correct for brioche bread as well, bread loaves and things like that. Um, these are fantastic. I really hope you guys enjoy these. This was a lot of fun doing this one. 
and this recipe is definitely one of my favorites I've ever created. Like I said, you can do these as hot dog shaped like I did. You can make hamburger buns out of them. They make six large hamburger buns really, really well with that recipe that I shared with you guys. Um, but you can double it, triple it, do whatever you want. And I haven't pushed the bounds with this, so I don't actually know how much fat we could get into this. If you're on high fat carnivore, these are great. It's a great way to use up extra egg yolks. You can continue adding and experimenting and see how many of those egg yolks you can get in there and how much fat you can make these things handle. Um, they're fantastic. I really hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, make sure to go down below in my description. I have merch for sale if you guys would like some t-shirts or cups or something just as a way to support the channel. If that's something you'd like to do and rep the Chris Cook and Nashville brand with some swag, that is there. Go check it out, I'll put that below. I also have a Patreon, brand new, but I had some people requesting that I start a Patreon because they wanted to support the channel that way. Um, so I actually have that below as well, and there's some really cool behind the scenes clips and different things I'm doing for the members in there. So if you're interested and you'd like to support the channel that way, you can totally go do that. I'll put those, those links down below. <clears throat> Even if that's not something you wanna do, just a like, a thumbs up, you know, a share and a comment and just telling people about it and everything, that means so much to me on this channel. It just helps me continue to grow and help people and to, to get my recipes out there for people who might enjoy them. So thank you guys so much for watching. It really means the world to me that you're here and I really hope you and your families enjoy this recipe for these carnivore brioche buns. Thank you so much. Eat your meat, love your life. This is Chris Cook in Nashville and I'll see you guys in the kitchen for the next one.